السلام عليكم ورحمة الله. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Praise be to Allah and the peace be upon His Prophet Muhammad, His family, friends, and the followers until the day of judgment. Uh, all of you know that we finished the course. I uh, explained three chapters. This is my my share in this course. And today I would like to solve some problems. We are, we are going to solve some problems. Uh, the, the problems actually is uh, big ones. So I'll uh, give you the uh, question and we are going to solve it together. The, prob the problem number one in chapter one. Uh, it, it, it states X company was organized on January the 1st, 2010. It is authorized to issue 10,000 shares of 8%, 100 per value by the first stock. Then this is, the, this is the authorized. You know that there is difference between authorized shares and issued shares. So it's authorized to issue 10,000 shares of 8%. The bar value is 100 with the third stock and 500,000 shares of no bar common stock. No bar common stock with a stated value of $2 per share. Then, this is the authorized for the third stock and for common stock. The following stock transactions were completed during the first year. January 1st issued 80,000 shares of common stock for cash at four dollars per share you know in this one we have a stated value two dollars per share then any issuance of common stock or the referred stock should be either at a stated value or preferred or par value for the preferred stock. Then the first transaction at January the 10th issued 80,000 shares of common stock for cash at $4 per share. Then the journal entry for this one because he the instruction he asked us to journalize the transaction then post to to the stockholders equity accounts and uh, he gave me uh, a note use GF as the posting reference posting reference for all these ones is don't worry about this note don't worry about it and then he asked me to number C to prepare the bid in capital section of the stockholders equity at December 31st 2010 at the end of the year then I asked me to journalize then to post uh, we need to post uh, to all accounts as you know because would like to know the balance because we need the balance in the bid in capital of stockholders equity at December 31st so the first transaction, the first one is January 10th issued 80,000 shares of common stock for cash at $4 per share. Then it would be the day January 1st, then the debit side cash, cash here 80,000 shares multiplied by 4 because he said 4 
cash at four per share at four dollars. Give me three hundred twenty thousand cash. If I debit cash three hundred twenty thousand, and it comes by multiply eighty thousand share for four. Then the credit side would be common stock. Again, you know that when we issue any uh, stock, it should be at any time in the life of the company or the corporation. It should be at the stated value or bar value. Here, as I said, it is stated value. Then, common stock it would be 80,000 multiplied by 2. It gives me 160,000. This is the common stock. And the rest, as you know, to be paid in capital. The, the stated value is 2. Then the, the paid in capital would be also 2 for share. Then the other part of the entry is paid in capital in excess of a stated value, common stock. And it, it comes also 80,000 multiplied by 2. It gives me 160,000. This is the fairest transaction. Again, cash is debit. Cash is debit by uh, 320, and the credit side would be 160 common stock and 160,000 paid in capital in excess of the stated value common stock. The another transaction or the second one, March the first issued 5,000 shares of the referred stock for cash at 105 per share. Here the par value as he stated before is 100. Then he issued it at 105 per share. Then at cash would be the amount paid. The amount paid is 5,000. Shares multiplied by 105. It gives me 525,000 cash. Then the debit side would be cash 525,000. And this again comes by multiply 5,000 by 105. It gives me 525,000. This is the debit side. The credit side, as you know, it would be the referred stock. It is. It should be at par value. 5,000 multiplied by 100. It gives me 500,000. And the difference would be the paid in capital in excess of par the referred stock. The difference between 105 and 100 is 5. Then we multiply 5,000 by 5. It gives me 25,000. Then the credit side will be the refused stock, 500,000, and bid in capital in excess of bar, the refused stock, 25,000. This is the second transaction. The third one. April the first. April the first issued twenty four thousand shares of common stock for land. The asking price of the land was ninety. The fair market value of the land was eighty five thousand. In this case, you should know that we issued it at the fair market value, not for the asking price. The asking price, it means they the asked for 90, but actually the fair market value, which we should follow, 
is the uh, is 85 then this land it will be uh, bought at the fair market value 85,000 the land 85,000 and we issued, we issued 24,000 for them for the owner of the land then 24 multiplied by 2 it gives me common stock then common stock it will be credited by 24,000 multiplied by 2 it gives me 48,000 and the rest it will be 85 minus the common stock minus 48,000 bid in capital in excess of stated value common stock it will be the difference 85,000 minus 48,000 give me 30, 37,000 then again this entry would be the debit side is land and again it is at the fair value as he stated then the credit side would be common stock 48,000 and a stated value common stock made in capital in excess of a stated value common stock 37,000 this is the credit side again the debit side 85,000 the credit side 48,000 common stock and 37,000 paid in capital in excess of a stated common stock and it comes from the difference between the 85 the fair market value for the land and the common stock price which uh, we issued at stated value two dollar per share okay then the 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 other one may the fairest issued 80,000 shares of common stock for cash at 4.5 beer share this is the uh, second essence of common stock again common stock should be uh, uh, should be when it is issued at any time it should be at either par value and in case of no par value it will be stated value then 80,000 shares at 4.5 dollar per share then cash it will be 80,000 the number of shares issued multiplied by 4.5 gives me 36 360,000 360,000 this is the debit side the credit side as usual it will be common stock 80,000 multiplied by 2 this is the stated value and the difference will be between the stated value and the cash paid is 4 0.5 minus 2 it gives me 2.5 2 dollar 0.5 this is the paid in capital in exist of the stated value common stock 80,000 multiplied by 2.5 it gives me 200,000 then again this journal entry would be cash 360,000 debit and the credit will be common stock 160 and paid in capital in excess of a stated value common stock 200,000 this is the transaction which happened in or occurred in May the 1st the next one in August the 1st issued 10,000 shares of common stock 
to attorneys in payment of their bill of 30,000 for services provided in helping the company organized. Then, this is the first year they should pay for the organization expense. Among these organization expense is the amount of 30,000 and this is owed to the attorneys. Then, we issued for them to pay instead of 30,000, we issued 10,000 shares of common stock. Then, the journal interview would be organization expense, the amount O2 autonomous, 30,000. This is the debit side, and the credit side would be common stock, the amount of shares issued, 10,000, multiplied by the stated value, two dollar. it gives me 20,000. And the rest of the difference between the amount O2 attorneys for as a part of organization expense would be the difference between the organization expense O2 O2 the attorneys and the common stock. Then 30,000 minus 20, the common stock, it will give me 10. 000. Then 10,000 would be paid in capital in excess of a stated value common stock. It comes as I said 30,000 minus 20,000. So the journal entry will be organization expense 30,000 debit and the credit would be common stock. 20,000 and paid in capital in excess of the stated value common stock 10,000. Again, organization expense 30,000 debit and the credit would be common stock 20,000 and paid in capital in excess of the stated value 10,000. Then the one before the last. September the 1st, issued 10,000 shares of common stock for cash at 5 per share. Again, we practice how to issue common stock. And you know, again and again, we, when we issue any common stock, we issued it at bar value. And the difference between the amount paid per share and the common stock uh, or, or stated value, it will be paid in capital in excess of a stated value, common stock. Then, this journal entry will be September the 1st, 10,000 multiplied by 5, this is cash. 10,000 multiplied by 5 gives me 50,000. Then 50,000 debit, cash, and the credit would be common stock at stated value. 10,000 multiplied by 2 gives me 20,000. And the difference between the stated value and the price, the, the price issued. Per share for, for the share issued is five, then it will be give me three, then ten thousand multiplied by three gives me thirty. So the paid in capital in exists of the stated value common stock it comes at follow ten thousand multiplied by three, then it gives me thirty. Again, the transaction in September. The journal entry would be as follow: cash debit by 50, and the credit side would include common stock 20, 
and paid in capital in excess of a stated value, common stock 30. This is the journal entry 50,000 debit, and the credit would be 20,000 common stock and 30,000 paid in capital in excess of a stated value common stock. The last transaction for this year at November the 1st issued 1,000 shares of the preferred stock for cash at 105, one, sorry, 109 per share. The last one, it was 105, and this one is 109 per share. And the same steps. Cash would be the amount paid, means we will multiply 1,000 by 109, it gives me 109,000, this is the cash, and it will be debit, and the preferred stock, it will be issued at the par value, the par value is 100, then 1,000 multiplied by 100, it gives me 100,000 the preferred stock, and the difference between the amount paid and the par value, it will be paid in capital exists of par the preferred stock. The difference between uh, the 100 and 109, it will be 9. Then, paid in capital in exists of par the preferred stock, 1000 multiplied by 9 will give me 9,000. Then, this transaction would be November the 1st, cash debit by 109,000, and the credit would be the refilled stock, 100,000 and 9,000. 100,000 the refilled stock, and 9,000 paid in capital in excess of the referred stock. I hope you understand how to journalize these transactions for issuance of uh, common stock and the referred stock and when we have the uh, organization expense we pay it for this organization also this is the uh, journal entries i very much hope you will un you will uh, you understand it this is the required the number a journalize the transaction then post to the stockholder the equity accounts will actually would use to post to all accounts all accounts uh, we'll start with the preferred stock and we'll use the the ledger with two sides debit and credit and the balance after each uh, transaction this one is very simple and I will. I, I. 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 am not sure if you used to uh, to to use it last two courses or not. But we'll try this course. It is very similar to the Open Army T account, which you it, it will have debit side and the credit side, and then you balance the account here after each transaction. You have the, the you have the balance, so we have the date, then the ex the explanation, and the explanation. I uh, uh, don't worry about it, and the reference. Don't worry about it. Then you should determine the debit and the credit side for each transaction. Then, if we start with the referred stock. The referred stock 
for the journal entries it will be March the first the credit as we solve it 500,000 and the balance will be 500,000 and November the first 100,000 then the balance would be 600,000 then the preferred stock would be 600,000 this is the balance the common stock if we look for the transaction which we use or we have common stock then we have a January the 10th April the 1st May the 1st August the 1st and September the 1st then January the 10th is the common stock is credited with 160,000 and the balance will be 160,000 at April the 1st we have 48,000 for common stock it will be credited as well then the balance will, we will add the 48 to the 160 called this credit it will be it will give us two or eight thousands then May the first also we have the common stock credited by 160,000 then the balance will, will, will be 368,000 the one before the last August the first we have also common stock then 20,000 credit and all the common stock and the preferred stock as you know is credit because it is credited by nature then uh, August the first we have 20,000 credit then the balance will add it to the, the 20 to for the balance it would be 388,000 and the last one at September 1st we have 20,000 credit and the balance will come to 4 or 8,000 <coughs> credit then the bid in capital in this bar the field stock also it is credit by nature then in the March the first it is credited by 25,000 and the balance will be 25 and at November the first it will be credited by 9,000 and the balance will be 34,000 then we come to paid in capital in excess of the stated value common stock we have bar value the refused stock and the stated value common stock then at January the first the first transaction we have it would be the common the paid in capital in excess of the stated value common stock credited, credited by 160,000 and the balance would be 160,000 then April the first it would be credited by 37,000 and the balance would be 100 97,000 then we come to May the 1st we have 200,000 credit the balance would be 397 credit then move to August the 1st we have the paid in capital in exists of stated value it would be credited by 10,000 then the balance by will be four or seven thousand the last transaction was September in this in this made in capital it would be uh, September the first thirty thousand credit the balance would be four hundred thirty seven thousand and credit as well all these accounts actually are credit the preferred stock by nature the common stock and the bid in capital in exists of bar the preferred stock and bid in capital in exists of the stated value common stock 
I just remind you, but what what we you studied before, this is capital or part of capital, and the capital when you studied in the first course, capital is created by nature. Then, then we we post this account because uh, we need we need this one to the the bid in capital or total bid in capital he asked me to prepare number c prepare the bid in capital section of the stockholders equity at december 31st so the bid in capital as you know it is part of the stockholders equity it is the first part we have two main parts in the stockholders equity the first part is paid in capital and the second part is retained earnings then he asked me only to prepare the paid in capital or total paid in capital total paid in capital consists of capital stock and additional paid in capital capital stock and additional paid in capital capital stock as you studied it is consists of referred stock and common stock and additional paid in capital is the same consists of paid in capital in excess of bar referred stock and paid in capital in excess of stated value common stock and sometimes we can have the paid in capital from the original stock but in this in this problem we haven't anything about uh, Television stock. So, it will be consist of only two items. Additional bid in capital. It is consist of three parts. Here we have only two parts. Then come back to the how to solve it. Then this is as again I said. Don't forget the headings. The headings again is the name of the company. The name of the statement and the date or the period. And here, this is the balance sheet. Balance sheet is a date. Then we have in the side of stockholders' equity and liabilities we have this this about stockholders equity but he only asked me to prepare paid in capital it is a section of stockholders equity as i said then paid in capital consists of capital stock eight percent preferred stock 100 bar value, 10,000 shares authorized, 6,000 shares issued, and outstanding. All this information should be there. All this information, the bar value, if, if, if there is a bar value, and for the preferred stock, uh, here we have bar value. Then the number of shares authorized and the number of shares issued and outstanding and in the preferred stock the issued equal the outstanding because the treasury stock only in the common stock then we come to the other part of the capital stock common stock here common stock no power but two dollars stated value 
than 500,000 shares authorized. The issued is 204,000 shares issued and outstanding. Here, the same issued and outstanding because there is nothing about treasury stock. Then the total capital stock is 1 million and 8,000. This is the total because we have capital stock 600,000 and the common stock 408,000. The total would be 1 million 8,000. This total capital stock. Then additional bidding capital consists here of two parts. Additional bidding capital in excess of part, the field stock 34,000, and in excess of stated value common stock 437,000. The total is 471,000, and the total of the paid in capital consists of total capital stock and total additional paid in capital. It would be 1 million 479,000. This is the how to solve this problem. I very much hope that uh, it would be interesting to solve these problems and to practice on, on it and to help you I'll give you the the solving of this problem I'll give you here the solving of this problem but please when you have it try to, to uh, solve it again alone and then you can correct yourself I under I I try to let you understand each transaction how 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 it come for each transaction and how to uh, post it after the generalization and then how to prepare the paid in capital section of the stockholders equity so please when you when you you you, you read the, this problem again try to solve it alone and to help you I give you the sol the solve of this problem okay this is the the first one as you know this is the journal entries how to journalize the transactions and you continue number B how to prepare or how to post these journal entries from the journal to the ledger and to to help you to prepare the additional B or, or the B, B in capital part which he asked me to prepare then this is number B how to use the journal to be to post from the journal for the ledger and to use the three column three three column ledger this as I told you before we have only the date don't worry about the explanation don't worry about the reference and then the debit and the credit and the balance so this one we call it ledger with three columns debit credit and the balance after each transaction so this is the transactions we use this one please try to learn it if you if you know it it is okay if you don't know it, please, please, please try to uh, learn it. And this is examples 
this is a, you, ha you have the journal entries and how to foster it and how to balance the account after each transaction. This is very, very simple and this is very, it will be helpful in, in instead of just posting then to balance the account and you, uh, uh, you may lose your some, some of your time. So this one is better. Actually, this kind of ledger is better. The ledger with three columns, debit, credit, and the balance. And the, this is the last one, how to prepare the paid in capital. And I explained all the, uh, the items of it, but don't forget the name of the company and the name of the statement and the date and this is we call it headings thank you very much and we will move to another problem i would like to solve more problems so i have another problems to practice this one this is uh, related to this ch chapter one and it is uh, uh, you will learn more about the television stock then this problem the stockholders equity account for X corporation on January 1st 2010 where at follows the field stock a thousand percent five dollars per this cumulative ten thousand shares authorized common stock when stated value two million shares authorized made in capital in this or bar value the field stock and paid in capital in excess of the stated value common stock. Retained earnings and the intervision stock common. And as you know, treasury stock only the treasury stock only for common. The, 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 this is ten thousand shares. Ten thousand I would like to look at these numbers. To learn the format to help you in solving the problem. The visual stock means the cost of the one share 50,000 over or, or uh, divided by 10,000 shares give, me, give you $5 per share. This is the cost of the visual stock. Then the preferred stock, 8%, percent, 50 dollar par. This is cumulative. cumulative. What does it mean by cumulative? Cumulative it means if you don't distribute dividends, then it will be there is some dividends in arrears because this is cumulative. When you uh, distribute dividends, then you have the right to use it, to, to have it. This is what, what they should take it first, as I told you before. This is cumulative, then the 10,000 shares authorized. Then the 400,000, it will be the issued. Then if you have the 400,000 and divided it by 50, this is the preferred stock bar, then it give, me, it give you the number of shares issued. Then he give you the shares authorized and you can conclude yourself the how many shares are issued from the preferred stock. 
the same also for common stock give you the authorized and you can find the the issued here is the issued is 1 million over one stated value it gives me 1 million shares and so the this these numbers you should learn from it should help you to solve these problems as well okay then this is the balances at January the first and then during 2010 the corporation had the following transaction and the events partnering to its stock holders equity February the first issued 20 25,000 shares of common stock for 120 and then uh, and he give you no dividends no dividends were declared and he asked you to prepare the this journal interest to journalize it and to post from the journal to the ledger and to prepare the stockholders equity then we'll start with how to journalize this one this is the same steps in the last problem but here you, you practice your, your knowledge what you know to have new type of journal entries related to other side of the uh, transaction in the corporation the leisure stock uh, retained earnings and so on okay so we'll start with the with the first transaction during 2010 February the first issued 25,000 shares of common stock for 120,000 then he told you that common stock it would be at a stated value one dollar so it would be issued at as you know at stated value and then the rest would be paid in capital in excess of a stated value then cash would be debit with 120,000 and this comes from the number he gave he, he gave it to me he said issued 25,000 shares of common stock for 120,000 then cash would be debit with 120,000 and the credit would be common stock he issued 25,000 multiplied by one stated value then it gives me 25,000 and the difference between the amount paid for this issuance 120 minus the common stock 25 it gives me the paid in capital and exists of a stated value common stock then cash 120 debit and the credit would be common stock 25,000 and the difference between common stock and the cash paid for these shares it will be paid in capital in excess of the stated value common stock 95,000 then again 120 debit the credit would be 25 common stock and the 95,000 paid in capital in excess of the stated value common stock the other transaction April 14 
sold 6,000 shares of Telegram stock. Common for 33,000. Then this is the cash we collected from the sales of or from the disposal of Telegram stock. Then 33,000 cash. And the treasury stock, it will be 6,000 multiplied by 5. And again, the 5, I told you, treasury stock from the information he gives you at, as a balance at January the 1st. He said, treasury stock, 10,000 share for, and the cost of it is 50. 50,000. Then the cost per share is 5. Then the original stock it would be 30. 30 comes from 6,000 multiplied by 5. It gives you 30,000. Then the difference between the cash collected, 33,000, and the cost of the original stock, 30,000, is made in capital from the original stock, 33,000. Minus 30,000, it gives you 3,000. Then again, cash would be debit by 33, this is the collected amount, and the credit would be Terrigal stock 30, and the bid in capital from Terrigal stock 3,000. The credit would be again 30,000 Terrigal stock and bid in capital from Terrigal stock 3,000. Then come to the other transaction, September the 3rd. Issued 5,000 shares of common stock for, uh, for a patent valued 35,000. In the last example, we issued some, st some shares for land and this is the, the patent it will be the same because the patent is a fixed asset but it is intangible asset the land was tangible this one is intangible asset and both are fixed asset okay then we issued 5,000 shares of common stock for a patent valued 35,000. Then the patent cost 35,000. Then patent is an asset, it would be debit, patent 35,000. And the credit would be common stock 5,000 because we issued 5,000 and the stated value for common stock is one dollar so it would be 5,000 5, multiplied by one it gives me 5,000 and the difference it would be paid in capital in exist of a stated value common stock the amount for patent this is the fair market value 35,000 minus the common stock three, uh, sorry 5,000 gives you 30,000 again the patent 35,000 would be a debit the credit would be common stock 5,000 and paid in capital in excess of the stated value common stock 30,000 this is the journal entry for September the 3rd, we come to the November the 10th, purchased 1,000 one shares of common stock for, for the treasury at a cost of 6,000. Six, six purchased 1,000 shares of common stock for the treasury at a cost of 
thousand. Then we 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 negotiate one thousand for six thousand. It means the cost it will be six thousand. But it doesn't matter to 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 complete the cost as long as you don't need you don't need it. When you need it, you need it when you dispose this one. But here you purchase it, you pay the cost for it, then it will be very simple. The visual stock six thousand cash six thousand. The visual stock would be debit for six thousand and the cash would be credit for six thousand. The last transaction December thirty first determined that the income for the year was Four hundred fifty-two thousand. Then you make the adjusting entry at the end of the year, as you know. Uh, you, you you know that at the end of the year we make adjusting entries. Among these entries, we close the revenues, we close the expenses, we close the income summary. In this one. We close the income summary. So the net income was for four hundred fifty-two thousand. Then it will be income summary four hundred fifty-two debit, and the retained earning it will be credit for four hundred fifty-two thousand. Again, this is the third, the third journal entry from the adjusting entry. To close income summary, close income summary. It is the difference between the revenues and the expenses. And this one of income summary it was uh, credit to, to close it, to, it should be debit. Then income summary is debit because this is net income. He determined that this one is net income, not net losses. Then it is income summary for hundred fifty two thousand. And the retained earnings is carried it with four hundred fifty-two thousand. Actually, this is journal entry, and this is, it gives you uh, more chance to practice how to make and and uh, or how to understand this one. It includes the television stock. Okay. Then, after the journalized of these transaction, we come to uh, post these transactions to the ledger and also again I remind you we will, we will use the ledger with three columns debit, credit and the balance we start with the preferred stock this is the balance was for 100,000 and this one for 100,000 it came from the balances at the beginning and nothing more for the field stock. For common stock, we have the balance at January the 1st, one million dollars, and then at February the 1st, it is carried by 25,000, then the balance would be one million. 25,000 and September the 3rd when we issued 5,000 for a patent then we have 5,000 it would be added to the balance it would be 1,030,000 as a balance of common stock then Paid in capital in exists of power per field stock. As you know, there is no change in the field stock or also in the paid in capital in exists of power per field stock because we, didn't, we don't uh, issue anymore. So the balance of it would be the same. 
at as January the first. So the balance will, will be one hundred thousands and no change. Then paid in capital in excess of stated value, common stock. The balance at January first, as you see in the information given to at the beginning of the problem, one million for hundred and fifty thousand, this is a balance. And in the in, in, in February the first to it is credited by ninety five thousand from the journal entry we did before, then the balance would be one million five hundred forty five thousand. And September the third also we have thirty thousand credit for the paid in capital in excess of stated value common stock then the balance would be one million fifty hundred seventy five thousand we come to the paid in capital from the reserve stock uh, we have no balance but it started at April 14th, it is credited by 3,000 and the balance is 3,000. The retained evenings, we have the balance of it at the January the 1st, 1,000, 1, sorry, 1,816,000 and at December 1st, we made the adjusting entry by credited the retained earning is by 452,000 so the balance became 2,268,000 the last account here is the visual stock we have balance of the visual stock at January the 1st 50,000 and then at April 14th, we sold some television stock, so it would be credited by 30,000. Then the balance became 20,000. And at November the 10th, it would be debit because the November uh, the 10th, we purchased the more. So it would be debit by 6,000. Of course, the original stock, it is uh, debit. So it would be debited by 6,000. Then the balance would be debited by 26,000. Then the last part of the, of this problem, how to prepare the stockholders equity in the last problem he asked me to prepare only the paid in capital only here we are, he asked me to prepare the stockholders equity so stockholders equity again I just remind you stockholders equity consists of two main parts paid in capital and retained earnings and if there is television stock it would be deducted from the total paid in capital and the retained earnings then it gives me total stockholders equity then we'll start to prepare stockholders equity we have in the side of liabilities and the stockholders equity we have don't forget in this side we should have the name of the company the name of the statement balance sheet and the date 31st of December 
2010. Then we start with liabilities of the if, the, if there's liabilities, but we we haven't anything about liabilities. Then we we also ask it to prepare stockholders' equity. This stockholders' equity consists of the first part is paid in capital. Bid in capital consists of capital stock. Capital stock consists of two parts. Number one, preferred stock. Here, you will start with preferred stock. 8% preferred stock. 50,000 bar value. This cumulative, we have 10,000 shares authorized and 8,000 shares issued and outstanding. And this is the for it gives me it gives me four hundred thousand because the this this number is given at of the at the balance of the the third stock at the first of January. No change for it. Then common stock no part. One dollar stated value, two thousand, two sorry, two million dollars shares authorized, one million and thirty thousand shares issued, and one million and twenty-five shares outstanding. All this information should be there. The common no part of the part value, and you determine the stated value if there is, like this question, and if the shares authorized, the shares issued, and the shares outstanding. The shares, the shares here authorized is different from the shares issued from outstanding because there is. Uh, the field stock, there is treasury stock. Then the treasury stock is 5,000. Then we have shares outstanding 1,025,000. And the issued is 1,030,000 1, issued. Then the Common stock with no bar. Its cost is one million thirty thousand. We add the the field stock to common stock. One million thirty thousand. It gives you the total. Of capital stock is one million forty three thousand. Then the second part of building capital, additional building capital, in excess of power, the field stock one hundred thousand, and this is given, no change for it. And in excess of the state value common stock, one million. Five hundred seventy-five thousand, and for ontario stock, three thousand. Then total additional bid in capital, one hundred thousand, plus one million five hundred seventy-five thousand plus three thousand. It gives me one million six hundred seventy-eight thousand. This total paid in capital. Total additional paid in capital. Then, if we, if we add the total capital stock to total additional paid in capital, it will give me total paid in capital three million one hundred and eight thousand. Then, this is the total paid in capital. We add the other part, retained earnings. Retained earnings two million 
and here we should uh, have the note, note to account. We say C note X, number one, number two, whatever, number X. Because he gave me that no dividends were declared during the year. Then, in this case, we have dividends in arrears. We have dividends on the preferred stock totaling, and you, you, you calculate it. Eight. Thousands shares of the field stock multiplied by eight percent by fifty. This is the dividends in arrears. Okay, it gives him it gives you thirty two thousand. This is dividends on the field stock totaling thirty two thousand are in arrears. This is note should be in the note to account. After the balance sheet, you, we have the note to account. Then, if we have any dividends for the preferred stock, and this preferred stock is cumulative, and we didn't, we 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 we, we haven't distributed any dividends for this year, then we have the amount of 32 in arrears. Then, within the evenings. We add it to the bidding capital. It gives me total, total bidding capital and the retained earnings 5,376,000 less or deducted from it the leisure stock 5,000 common stock and its cost is 26,000. Then the total stockholders equity is five million three hundred fifty thousand. I very much hope that you understand this one and also to help to help you I'll give you the the solve solution of this uh, problem. We started as you see with the journal entries start from February of the first until the end of, of December and then we come to the how to post the uh, from the journal to the ledger and also again we will use the ledger with three columns debit credit and the balance and this one is very helpful and I hope that you learn it now we uh, solve two problems I, I, I hope that you, so you you know it now and then we come to the last part in this one is the stockholders equity this is uh, again don't forget the name of the company the name of the statement and the date and this to call the equity as I explained it and after this after you find the total stockholders equity as a part of the balance sheet then we have notes to the account and this note uh, it has a number I give you note X it means the number X number one two so whatever dividends on the referred stock totaling 32,000 and I computed as follow 8,000 issued multiplied by 8% multiplied by the par value for the share or the third share it gives me the amount of dividends in arrears so I should refer to it in the notes to the account I very much hope you understand this one and we'll meet again in, in, in another lecture to have more problems in the in chapter 2.
as we did in chapter 1 inshallah thank you very much assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh